This is Michael McKeon, a.k.a. Morris Fletcher, a.k.a. Chuck McGill. You know who I am. But it's time for Inside the Gilliverse with Eric Broadbent. You're watching Inside the Gillivers, talking all things Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul. Brought to you by the Royal Bobbles Collection at Bobbleheads.com. For all your favorite characters from the Gillivers, shop the Royal Bobbles Collection at Bobbleheads.com. Also brought to you by Rode Microphones, the official microphone supplier of Inside the Gillivers. See their entire lineup today at Rode.com. Now, please welcome your host, Eric Broadbent. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for Season 3, Episode 15 of Inside the Gilliverse, talking all things Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul. My name is Eric Broadbent, and it comes with extreme pleasure to welcome tonight's guest. Welcome back to the program, both in tandem this time, and they need no introduction, but I'm going to introduce them anyway, so I'm going to flick a switch here and bring them on, Mr. Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould, the captains of the Gilliverse ship. Gentlemen, how are you? Great. Doing doing great, Eric. Great to see you. Great to see everyone else. We I know see you. I know Vince, but who's this guy? <laughs> it's great here. It's great it's great hearing all your great sponsors too, Eric. I love I love it. Thank you. I didn't you. know that there was an official microphone of inside the Gil uh, into the Gilliverse. It's fantastic. Yeah, the and Royal Bottles. Yes. Yeah. Vince, maybe Vince will tell you later, you know, there was a time when uh, they told us that uh, they, people weren't interested in T-shirts for Breaking Bad. That's no true. one bought a T-shirt for a, for a TV show. Yeah. So now now there are bobbleheads. And my God, isn't that fantastic? Awesome. There, there's incredible merch. I was obviously, you, you guys see now, but the merch lineup is just insane. It's never ending and people want every single piece they can get. It's I saw one today. Uh, the... Uh, U2s, uh, they've got one of uh, Hank sitting on the toilet reading. Uh, 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 did you see that one, Peter? <laughs> I did, at, yes. Is Hank on the toilet uh, looking at the, uh, realizing re the moment that he realizes who Walter White is. It's it's, it's very funny. I, like, I it. like that one. I also like Huel lying on a, Huel lying back on a big pile of money. <laughs> that may be my is, You know, what I'd like to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, make another sequel. <laughs> there we go <laughs> well listen we have as i told you guys off the air first of all it's a pleasure to have you back we have an insane night like you guys are setting records tonight and uh, so i'm going to in, uh, divert all my questions to the fans tonight but i do have a tiny 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 little speech and being that we've only got two episodes left i felt it's the least i could do to thank you guys so i do have to read it i'm going to make it very fast i'm going to fly to questions so uh, here we go. So the content you and your team have created has changed my life. To say I love Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul is an understatement. I think it raises a bar beyond uh, reach for anything on television, or the big screen for that matter, as each episode feels like a full-length feature film. Uh, I, I often think I have good ideas, but more often than not, the ideas fall flat. And a couple of years back, I had this gut feeling to create a podcast to share my love of your work with like-minded fans across the planet. I can safely say that this is something I'll forever take pride in and knowing within my heart that it was one of the best decisions of my life. I've made so many friends around the world from the cast, crew, our viewers, you guys yourselves. All thanks to you and the Gilliverse community is like no other. It's a Gilliverse family and you are responsible for it. I know we only have two episodes left, each written and directed by the two of you, and it's going to be a very bittersweet time uh, for everyone in the Gilliverse family, but instead of focusing on the sadness that will come with it, I like to focus on the positive and what has come as, uh, as a result of your hard work and dedication. Hands down, the best television I've experienced in all my years and the best community on the internet, bar none. And I'm almost done. On behalf of myself and everyone watching this tonight, I wish to express my sincerest gratitude and thanks to both of you. Thank you for everyone at Gilliver's headquarters for being so kind to me and my team. Uh, and P.S. Tom, thank you for believing in my idea and to your better half. Thank you for letting Tom come out and play for 10 wonderful, pl 10 plus wonderful episodes. Love you, buddy. Now, that being said, you guys ready for a bunch of wicked awesome questions? That was, that is so, that man, wow. I Yes. Awesome. That, thank, thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thanks to everybody watching and listening. So yeah, let's do it. Right on. We're both speechless from yeah. the compliments. So we'll, we're good. That's uh, there you go. You, 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 you took the words, right. 
took the words away. There's no words left. Thank you, Vince. So Thank now you, we'll Peter. try to answer some questions with We're no words. All right. right. I'm gonna be <laughs> no words are out of words. Right. I, I'm going to be doing sort of an interpretive dance to answer each question. No that's, problem. That's going to be my, my method. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's our People voice. Love seeing me dance. <laughs> here's I'm our voice. Here's our voicemail questions coming in. We have seven of these on deck. First one is our executive producer, Karina. She always has great questions. And this is, I'm not sure, to, probably to both of you. And take it away, Karina. Hi, Vince. Hi, Peter. This is Karina. So happy to have both of you on. And thank you for bringing us the two greatest series of all time. I'm wondering what the blue screen in the last two openers represents. An end to the Better Call Saul timeline, maybe? Should we expect a new intro in the last two episodes? Very good question. I'm going to let Mr. Gould uh, uh, hand, take that one because it was whose idea was it, Peter? It was yours, right? That was I think it was Joey Reinish. I'm going to just say, uh, you know, the uh, the title sequences have been the the, uh, you know, a lot of t not to toot our own. I'm going to toot our horn. I can't help it. <laughs> a lot of TV shows and movies. You know, they, they go to an outside company to make to make the titles. You know, you see all those very impressive titles. And I've been I've been on board some of those things. And, and the very talented artists will uh, create all kinds of amazing imagery to open up a show. Uh, but, you know, as great as those and as accomplished as those folks are, they're not part of the show. They're 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 giving their interpretation of the show. The great thing, and I, I think Vince took the lead on this, was to say, let's just do it here. Let's do it here in our office. And so ever since then, uh, the main title of the show has been the providence of uh, providence of uh, one of our assistant editors. Uh, this year, it was Joey Reinish, who is no longer an assistant editor. He's actually an editor in his own right and, and a really talented one, too, by the way. Um, yeah. And he... Uh, he 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 came up with this idea of changing our titles uh, for this last uh, grouping when we when we jump jumped forward into the Omaha world yeah. and it, but the thing that's that's kind of the, the continuous part is it's all has a low tech feel you know all all the the feeling of all the titles is as if the uh, you know as if the as if the kids from U and M were making those titles <laughs> and maybe they'd been uh, locked in a locked in a hot attic for six years uh and dubbed and dubbed over and over again because the idea is just always a, it's kind of degraded uh and this one uh what what used to happen i don't even know if you're depends on how old you are but uh with with a vhs if if the tape started crinkling or there was uh i, I that's how i remember it Vince. maybe you remember it differently no i remember there was a problem was with the tape or was or if it was blank suddenly the screen would go blue rather than showing you all the and that, that was that was yeah. sort of our nod to the idea that the the signal, which has been kind of coming in and out, maybe the signal's going to go away. Maybe uh, and, and and maybe this maybe this machine is about to break down completely. That we're in, I love it. I love that answer. And then we're in uncharted territory. We're off the map now, and and dropping the music. I can't remember whose idea that was, but I. I love that. It just we just because we love Peter and I. Everyone who works on the show loves Little Barry's theme. It's just fantastic musical theme. But then it going away, yeah, it puts you on notice, doesn't it? It it, it tells you you know things are. Uh, yeah, it's it, <laughs> it's there's not yeah it 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 feels valedictory or if I'm using that word right, it feels like it feels like we're coming to an end. Innocence is gone. Innocence is gone now. Yeah. yeah. And even if you pause back in the day too, you could burn the tape, you know, as you could get some bad spots on it too. It, it was, it was fantastic. It's very, very cool. Totally VHS feel hundred percent on that. So good answers on that one. We're going to jump over to, I told you about our, uh, our moderator, Jen Stevens and this little gem that she made. Let's show our fans out as well too. She has a question for you. And of course, the Davis and main bottle as well. I'm going to, I'm going to make Jen, I'm going to get in touch with you. I want to send Peter and, and Vince both one of those. So, I'm going to be uh, emailing you for that. Okay, here That's is her beautiful. question. Yeah. Hi, Vincent Peter. My name is Jen. My question is, what was it like to work with the incredible Carol Burnett this season? And are there any fun stories you could share? Vince, I know you worked with her daughter, Carrie, on your Monday episode of The X-Files. Thanks for bringing us an incredible season this year. Oh, good question. Timely question. Uh, my, my wife, Holly and I, we, we had dinner with Carol and her uh, husband, Brian, just last night, actually. And, uh, it was, it was, uh, she is, she's, she is 
an American treasure, as 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 we as we all know. It, uh, there might be some young folks tuning in who who don't quite know who Carol Burnett is, or hear hear other folks saying Carol Burnett. Uh, should I know who she is? Educate yourself. Uh, you know, look. Uh, the great thing about YouTube is you can find you can find old sketches from the Carol Burnett show. She is. If you don't know, I think most of the folks listening know who Carol Burnett is, and she is just. It was wonderful working with her, and I met her uh, years ago on Breaking Bad. This is such a Hollywood story. We met because we shared a favorite. This is such a Hollywood story. I'll just say it. We, <laughs> shared, we shared a favorite limo driver, uh, a wonderful gentleman named Jason, uh, who worked for the company that uh, would we you know we'd uh, we'd get driven to the Emmys or get driven wherever, which is a, a great you know, a great uh, thing to, to be able to get to do. And the driver we always requested is a guy named Jason, who's become a close friend to, to both of us. And he went, you know, like six, seven, eight, now probably 10, 11, eight, nine, 10 years ago, he'd say, Carol, you know, uh, I was driving uh, my friend Carol and she loves Breaking Bad. I'd say, Carol, who is it? Carol Burnett. I said, oh my God. So he would pass along you know, hellos between us for years. Literally, he was the go-between. And finally, one day I, we got, Holly and I got in his car and, and he said, uh, you know, Carol says we should just stop. Uh, you, you guys should just uh, cut out the middle man, me, and you should, you should just go to dinner. And the rest was history. And then, uh, Peter, tell, uh, tell, tell, tell the guys how, uh, how, you, how you met Carol. Oh, my God. It's another Hollywood story. And it's embarrassingly Hollywood. Uh, I was, we were so fortunate and excited to, be, uh, to win a Peabody Award. Uh, and, uh, New York is my hometown. So the, the fact that I got to go on a trip and, and to New York and see family, my wife and I got to go and, uh, there's a dinner and it was, it was, you know, it's a super special event. Uh, it's in fact, it feels weird to be there, uh, at, for a fiction show because there are all these great works of journalism that are winning, winning awards. But in the middle of this, uh, I, somebody came up and said, Carol Burnett would like to meet you. And I, oh my God. So uh, Nora and I went over to, to Carol's table and she hugged me and she's so warm and such, such a lovely person. She's, you know, sometimes you, they say you don't want to meet your heroes or, uh, and, and, and she's, she's everything that I would have hoped and more. She's just a, such a warm, brilliant, smart, fun person to be around. Uh, and so when we came up with this idea of, uh, character named Marion uh it was just natural to say and and I think I thought this is always the way things go Vince always is like yeah go ask her and I'm always thinking it's too good to be true I'm just always I'm Mr. Negative it's too good to be true she, it won't work out there'll be why would she go to Albuquerque for x number of weeks to be uh, on our show and you know what she she agreed to do it and I gotta say um she brightened everybody's spirits. You know, this was an extremely long shoot. Uh, it's more episodes than we've ever done since since Breaking Bad. We've gotten slower and slower. And uh, there was COVID and uh, a lot of production problems. And of course, Bob's health scare. Uh, so it, it, we, everyone was, uh, I'd say, a little bit exhausted. And also, basically, starting in Omaha, it's sort of a new TV show. So everyone was just working crazy hours uh and, and working really hard and you know it wears on you and then here comes this uh icon uh you know icon of especially a sketch comedy and she's working with bob and they had this chemistry that was just so electric uh and she's just such a kind fun person to be around it, it raised having her there just raised everybody's spirits 600 percent. so uh, i don't know if there's a story, uh, you know, she was willing to do the, uh, the Tarzan yell. I don't know if that's, and, and that's, that's one of her signatures. Uh, I just started reading her autobiography and I found out that that goes right back to her childhood. Uh, and it's a, it's a book I, I do recommend. So, but yeah, she, she did the, she would, she would just, I, I'm trying to think of Vince, you probably have more stories. You directed her quite a bit. It, it was, I mean, I, I, I really got to direct uh, just the bait. Uh, well, I can't. Oh, boy. I'll be oh, careful. Oh, careful. <laughs> oh. 
Just oh, the man. big scene where edit, edit. We're not live, right? We're not. We could edit this. No, yeah, well, just, you cut that out, Eric. Yeah, oh, of course. You. Water down, but still, I'm almost slipped there. I, no, it's not bourbon. It's iced tea. Um, <laughs> so I have no excuse. Uh, I got to direct her. It was marvelous, uh, and she's she's living history. She's uh, she's a, a America's sweetheart. She's uh, she's all the great things you can say about her. And, uh, and yeah, everything Peter said and more, she just, it, she's just, uh, you know, it, she, it, was, it was such an honor and a privilege working with, mm -hmm. uh, with, with Carol. I can't even believe I caught, you know, the first couple of times I met her, I kept calling her, you know, Ms. Burnett. Yeah. You just and you just, cause you just want, it's like, it's like meeting a queen. You're not going to say, Hey, Lizzie, you know, but, uh, uh, you know, she's just, she is very much Carol and she is just a wonderful, wonderful person. And I feel we, we know safe to say, Peter, we feel lucky to know her and to, oh, yeah. uh, to work wonderful, with her. Wonderful. Wonderful. My, my, my mother loved her. She's passed away. I watched her as a kid. I mean, she's, she's, she's timeless. She's, she's forever. Um, our next audio question, and Pete, you are uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Peter, you'll recognize this fellow, Raghava. He is the guy who does the pencil sketches. He did a really nice one we sent to you. And he's got a killer one, and for the, for the first time ever, of color uh, for Bob. So we're going to send it to Bob's team next week when Bob's on. But here is Raghava's question, probably to both of you. Hey, Vince. Hey, Peter. It's Raghava. It's so great to have you back on Inside the Gillivers. While I'm a bit sad that we've only got two more episodes left, I'm also excited to see what other new ideas you guys have in store for us. Because I'm sure whatever you create from now on will have your unique fingerprints. Here's my question. We know that Better Call Saul is set around early 2000s. Almost 22 years have passed since then. What were some of the things that happened in the Better Call Saul story that wouldn't have been possible if it were to happen in today's day and age? Mm. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of, a lot of pay phones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pay phones are more funded, aren't they? It's, you know, I guess it's all about the iPhone and the... Uh, and uh, and the uh, and the inter well, I guess we had internet in the early two thousands. But you can't uh, slam a phone, right? It's like <clears throat> yeah, you can't slam a phone. But like Jimmy, uh, uh, Gene can slam a payphone. Yeah, payphones are it's just fun seeing seeing someone banging on a payphone. Yeah, I've I've as someone who actually has broken an iPhone before, you can break those too. <laughs> Bit of peak, <laughs> but uh, actually it was an iPad, but same difference. But yeah, it's it somehow doesn't doesn't look as cool as wanging on a on a payphone. But uh, it's a good question. Um, yeah, what else? I don't know, Peter. I'm drawing a blank. What is there anything we couldn't have done? I don't know. That's a, it's it's a great question. There's some stuff that probably we could technically we shouldn't have done the way we did. For instance, when Kim is in doc review. Uh, way back in whatever that was, season two, mm -hmm. um, you know, doc, most doc review is really done on screens is not usually done with piles wow. of paper. And that, that we just decided that we would rather use piles of paper because we're Neanderthal, Neanderthals. And uh, it's, also, it's just, it, you know, I think we both have a little bit of an allergy to people staring at screens too much yeah. uh, on, in, in, in drama. It's, it's something that's tricky. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. That's uh, those are the things. That, by the way, what a talented artist you are! Oh uh, man, Ragavan, really, he is You're very flat. There's nothing more flattering. It's also it, it's 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 amazing to open up an envelope and see your own face <laughs> <laughs> and not be a one like a, a a wanted poster or something. Yeah, no, not yes, not exactly. like you know, not like when you go in the in the post office, you know. Look yeah, at that's right. Pulling board there, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's good. And this is one of the first ones I've ever seen in color. He's done to Bob, so we're gonna make sure Bob gets that one as well too. So thank you, Raga, for that great question. I love it. Good question. This good one question. is over from Nat Natalia Romero, as she's a longtime member and viewer of the channel. Let's listen to her question. I think she's over in Spain, I believe. Hi, Peter and Vince. Uh, this is Natalia Romero. Uh, thanks for coming in the show. It's so nice to have you both here and uh, to be able to ask you stuff. Uh, so uh, here's my question. What's happening with uh, Santiago? What happened in Santiago? Are we going to get some closure there? Or uh, if not, can you tell us, guys, any of you? Um, well, that's my question. So uh, thank you for these many years of great entertainment and well can't wait to to see both your episodes and also to see what you have in mind as your next projects okay thank you bye bye 
So the Gus backstory, a lot of people have been really itching about that, whether it needs to be told or whether we can, what, what, do, you, what do we think on that? Well, all these, all these wonderful people asking all these tough, these uh, PhD level questions. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a tough one. Uh, well, and we, we, you know, and we got to be coy too about what's upcoming, but, but it's, I don't know. How do you answer that, Peter? What do you, what do you, what do you think? I'm, let's see, I'm, I'm passing the buck here. Like, uh, uh, you are passing the buck a little bit, but uh, you know, that was, we talked, you know, the thing about it is that we don't really feel anything is, we talk about ideas, but nothing is locked in until it makes it to an episode. Uh, so, you know, we certainly had conversations about Gus being part of the Pinochet regime and, and, and having that, having that as part, but I, 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 those are all, uh, a little loose. It's loose until, until, until it becomes, uh, it becomes part of the story. So I, I don't think that there's, I don't, I mean, you know, it's, it's, I'd be interested to see uh, some fan fiction, uh, to see what, or, or if, uh, if, if, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the Gus Fring, the Gus Fring uh, prequel series uh, shows up. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I think, I think we got to leave. We got to leave our options open. That's right. So, so in other words, Peter Gould, are you saying, uh, Natalia, don't hold your breath to hear in, in the next two episodes about about this? No. Is- <laughs> I, I think we have enough. I think there's enough open territory for us to, to admit that you're not going to see a flashback to what happened in Chile. I think you're safe on that. Met Gus Fring. I think there's, there's, there's a lot of other exciting things that I don't think you're going to expect to see. And there are a lot of questions that get answered, but that's that one. Maybe, maybe we leave a few things open. I think so. And by the way, that wasn't, that wasn't Vince uh, uh, passing the buck to you. That was the sound of a bus and he threw you under it. <laughs> it was, wasn't it? Yeah, well, you and then you backed up. You backed up too. Just makes beep, beep. I've been hearing backup buzzers all day today. Trust me, I've been hearing too many backup buzzers. All right, we're gonna jump over now to. Can I say one? Can I say yeah, one yeah thing? of course. Because it it was a good question, Natalia asked. I uh, I like to think of. I still don't know what was in that briefcase. Was it a briefcase in uh, Pulp Fiction? That every time they open it up, it shined golden light. Uh, hopefully it's not too maddening, uh, if you don't necessarily get an answer to what his backstory was, hopefully it's a little more like that in that, you know, you kind of get to make up your own mind as to, you get to, you know, fill in, fill in the blank on that. Uh, I hope, I hope that's not a too maddening an answer, but that's kind of how I always saw it thinking like Peter said, maybe we'd get to it. Maybe we wouldn't, but it didn't ultimately to me feel necessary. Uh, just we knew that he was a fascinating individual who had some sort of dark past, some sort of uh, past that made him on some level untouchable by the uh, Salamancas. And hopefully that's hopefully that was enough, I hope. Well, if I can quote incorrectly, uh, Sammy Hagar lyric and Sammy Hagar obviously mentioned several times in Better Call Saul with Jeff, uh, what is misunderstood need not be discussed. So something like that. So sometimes we don't necessarily need to know all of it. You know, we have to use our hypothesize and, and we can paint as many pictures as we want of what happened in, in Chile. So it's cool, but a good question for sure. Here's a new question. Uh, I mean, from a new user from Adam and let's see what Adam's question is. Hi, Vince and Peter. My name is Adam. And my question for the both of you involves using past films and TV as reference for Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. How do you balance inspiration from past work and also new original ideas during the production of an episode? Thanks. What do you think? I answer, what do you think, Peter? I, I, I mean, I got a thought, but I, I was I did a lot of talking on that last one. What no, you I, you, I, I, we're not... We, we don't have to, we don't have to share 50, 50, but I I'll say, I think, I think that the, you know, look, we're movie buffs. Uh, and one of the fun things about Saul Goodman is unlike, unlike Walter White, he's a, he's a true movie buff. Walt, Walt liked um, some movies and we certainly got, it was one of my episodes. We got to see him watching Scarface. Uh, so, but, but, uh, but, but Jimmy and Kim are both real movie buffs and that's given us a lot of freedom uh, to, to kind of see the world through their eyes. I would say that most of the movie, re- in terms of balancing, it's, I, I don't, we don't really think about balance so much, but yeah. I, I, I think it's more about um, the story, hopefully, is, is as original as we can make it. 
but sometimes you know there are references to things or or uh sometimes you know you see you see uh you find you find a way to express something that happens at using using a technique from a movie that you love or a reference but it, i think the it would be it would be kind of dull to just repeat things and so you know it's i'm probably one of the most obvious things is uh right at the beginning of the first season we had him saying it's showtime, you know, which of course is a direct reference to all that jazz. And he, and he's a, you know, and it's, it's uh but it's completely, you know, he's not, he's not trying to direct a play and doing drugs and sleeping with, with everybody inside. He's trying to do these little, uh, he's trying to close these little uh, PD cases uh, as, 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 as best he can. So it's, it's a little bit, I think it, it was kind of in a, there's sort of an ironic quality to it because he's not, you know, he's not a, he's not an artist. He's just a guy trying to make it through his day. And the way he does that is kind of maybe per pretend to be Roy Scheider in, uh, in all that jazz for a moment. And he does say to, uh, he does say to the, the, uh, the guard who gives him a funny look, it's from a movie. Uh, <laughs> when we first started doing this, our, our hope was just didn't work out. And I don't blame anybody for it. Our, our, our dream version of this was that uh, since we're on AMC, that AMC would show the movies that we would refer to and yeah. we could tie them in, we could tie them in together. So, you know, before episode two of season one, they would show all that jazz, but uh, that's, that's a, uh, that was kind of a reach. I mean, they have, they have the license to show what movies they got the license to show. Yeah. I have forgotten all about that. That would have been awesome. And in the pilot episode, of course, we actually even made the table look like the long table right. in the movie network when uh, Ned Beatty is, is, is selling to, uh, oh, what's a wonderful actor's name who passed away before, um, passed away Peter before Finch. He won, Peter Finch uh, won the Oscar posthumously for network. Yeah. So we, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun to do. But we're not, we don't, there's no formula. I'm just repeating what Peter said in different words. There's no formula to it in terms of, oh, we got it. It's, you know, it's been two and a half episodes. We need another homage to a famous movie. Although we did want the beginning of uh, 602, the beginning of the act one. It was the pullback, the shot from the opening of The Godfather. Uh, I believe in America, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, 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 uh, undertaker character who's asking for for vengeance and uh it's fun doing them but the real answer is we're trying to invent our own new stuff it's not easy don't don't manage to pull it off in every episode or, or you know but it's we're always looking to come up with something new and then stuff like that is just fun little easter eggs so yeah fantastic fantastic we have two audio questions left the next one is an, from a new uh, member of our channel to it his name is baxter here is baxter's question Hi Vince, hi Peter, Baxter here. So my question is about foreshadowing. It seems like every time a main character is introduced, you also kind of hint at how they'll die. So we meet Nacho while Jimmy's being interrogated in the desert. Nacho dies interrogated in the desert. Chuck, we see him with the lantern at the desk. He dies at the desk. First time we see Howard, Jimmy mentions Network, which ends with a man named Howard being shot in the head. First time we see Lalo cooking in the kitchen. The rest of the world thinks he died in the kitchen. Uh, and to escape, he has to go underground. He dies underground. Even in Breaking Bad, the first shot before we see Gus is the ground shot of the wheelchair ramp in front of Los Pollos Hermanos. And then as soon as he comes on screen, there's a little ding from the cash register. So is this on purpose or is this just a happy accident? Thanks, guys. We all had that look <laughs> like this. <laughs> Like yeah. that, that That's is amazing. So, I didn't know we were such geniuses, Peter. <laughs> of course you are. Of course you are. <laughs> that, that is a brilliant summation of, of stuff. I was blissfully unaware of. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. That was, that's fantastic. What a, what a, what a, what a, what a recitation of, that was a very impressive. That was a very impressive question. I wish our answer was just as impressive, but Peter's is safe to say that uh, we're, we're getting more credit. Than we deserve. <laughs> that, is, that is that is safe to say. Uh, but you know, it, it, the only thing I'd say is that it's it's uh, when something's working, uh, it's, things seem to fall into place, yeah. and it's not necessarily because we have this master plan. 
that we that it's all it's all it's all figured out ahead of time and and because i i mean we didn't you know when lalo was introduced we had no idea that he was going to be attacked in the kitchen when uh when gus was introduced i remember the moment actually we figured out that hector well roughly the moment we figured out that hector was going to blow gus up and i remember we wrote on the on a card ding boom yeah and then whenever Whenever somebody visited the writer's room, Vince insisted that we take the card down because it was such an important idea. And he felt that Ding Boom was just going to give it all. It was so obvious what was going to happen from Ding Boom. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I, I, we didn't we didn't know those things. Uh, so but I I am blown away by it. And uh, all I can say is, uh, you know, accidents, you know, it's just it's it's i think when you're in a groove it's it's like music you know things things start i'm assuming not being musical things start coming together in a way that you can't plan completely mm-hmm. uh there's there's uh and, and and i think when some when you're when you're playing really well maybe uh maybe maybe sometimes there are some things maybe it's a happy accident or uh or maybe i don't know that's i that's the best i can do for the answer <laughs> I, I think we should have just made up a bunch of crap about how, yeah, oh, yeah, who we, we meant all that. But, just on uh, purpose. That was, who asked that question? Who was the, the gentleman? That was from it? Baxter. Baxter. Baxter, we could have we could have used you in the writer's room. <laughs> hats off. Hats off to Baxter. Hats off to Baxter. Yes. That was, well, like, that was a- well, like both of you have told me, and you've told many other interviews as well, too. I mean, a lot of things are throwaway lines. It's it's something to for the episode. It's a throwaway line. And as you know, we wouldn't even be talking about Better Call Saul, this Saul Goodman character right now, if it wasn't for this character in Breaking Bad that was just basically, you know, and look what now. Let's save it for the spinoff, the, the Saul spinoff, you know, the Saul Goodman show. And look where we are now. I mean, thank, thank God that you guys follow up on these little ideas sometimes. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, in all credit, I, the, the folks obviously listen. If you're listening to this podcast, you're a super fan, so you already know this. But because I've already said this before, but it bears repeating. Hats off to Peter Gould for Lalo, Peter, and the writers, because you know, I I was a I was the one on Breaking Bad who was a. I mean, I I mean, we all were nuts for for not dropping any having any loose threads. We all were equally. But I, I don't know, I relaxed or got lazy or something over the years since Breaking Bad. And I was the one saying, okay, this is such a throwaway line in, 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 in Better Call Saul, the Breaking Bad episode where, where, where Jimmy, Gene, Gene, not Gene, uh, Saul, Jesus, sorry. How many people, that, right? <laughs> no. he's, 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 he contains multitudes. Uh, but uh, when he says, Lalo, no, 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 not Lalo. And it was such a throwaway line. Uh, when Peter wrote it, Peter, you would admit that, right? It was just, it was just a, oh, like a name. And, absolutely. And I, and everybody's already heard this is watching. I'll, so I'll make it quick, but I just, I, I kept saying all through the creation of Better Call Saul, because Peter, and we'd be pulling his, his beautiful hair out, his thing, you know, saying, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, is, uh, you know, how are we going to Lalo? We got to get Lalo into this. We got to get Lalo. And I, I finally said, oh, for God, God's sake, everybody, let's just, don't worry about it. I was so wrong because we wouldn't have had Tony Dalton. Oh my God, oh. what a what a what a loss to all of us not having Tony Dalton, uh, the actor, not having Lalo the character. I, I was so wrong. It's it pays to be obsessive, you know. It really does. I I, I thought I was. Oh, uh, you, yeah. Nobody's I, more obsessive than you. <laughs> I, I, I'm getting lazy in my old age. I don't know if I, 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 I would not have obsessed over that. And I was completely wrong. I was completely wrong on that one. So, you know, one of the many, I, I learned so much from working with Vin on, on, on Breaking Bad. But one of the things I learned in the writer's room, you're always, you're always, when you're working for a showrunner and especially one, you know, who you really, you know, want to support, you, you try to figure out things that you're going to say that are going to help move the story forward. And what I learned pretty quickly was the things that always seemed to move the story forward was when you asked a question about something that had already happened. And that, in other words, instead of looking forward and saying, you know, sitting back in your chair and go, ah, I know what I want to see. I want to see Jimmy doing this or, or Walt doing that. Uh, that's, you know, that's one thing to, to work towards something, but then, the character, the character may not want to do what you, what you, but if you already have something, and the the one that I always think of is uh, uh, 
when we introduced Gus, it was, he was Poyos Hermanos, the Chicken Brothers, and there are two male chickens. I I don't know. That's the, that's another that's another thing to talk about. Uh, but the two male chickens. And, and, you know, I remember sitting in the writer's room and one of us said, well, if why are the chicken brothers? Who's right. the other brother? Right. And that and, and it's a it's such a weird question. And, and at first it seemed like a, a pointless question. But that led us to to the idea of Max to this, you know, this 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 lost love and uh, to try to figure out what what happened, how how he got here and how he got his this weird relationship with a cartel where he was of the cartel, but not a member of the cartel, really. Uh, and, and it's, it's funny, but it's you going back. The other one I remember uh, is we always used to say in the writer's room on Breaking Bad is, how is it Walt ended up being a, um, a high school chemistry teacher? He's obviously quite brilliant. And he's got the certificate saying he contributed to Nobel Prize winning work. And yet, He's leading this dead end. And that, you know, those those questions It's funny because uh, sometimes those questions lead all kinds of it to interesting places in story. And they also uh, they give you the illusion when you're watching it that we set everything up. Uh, <laughs> so it's 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 sort of a it's a win win. And it's something I learned completely. For, I, I, it's not something I would have ever learned uh, from anybody else or any other way than, than working with Vince. Well, that mining, mining the past, maybe to give ourselves undue credit. I'm still thinking about Baxter's question, but looking back, looking backward, maybe on some, I don't know. I'm just, this is, I'm trying to earn, I'm trying to earn that respect that Baxter gave <laughs> us, but maybe looking backward, maybe that's, if there's any subconscious reason for it, maybe it's because like Peter, like you said, we're always looking backward. Uh, which which informs going forward yeah because i want to second with peter I, I know there's more questions i don't want to i want to get to this, all good but, all good but but it, but it it uh it, it 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 you know it bears repeating what peter said it's a very important point for the for the uh budding writers for the folks who who want to who want to do this for a living who are listening it it it, it very really bears repeating what peter said you it, it you it's easy to sit there and say, ah, here's what I want to have happen for my character. I want to, I want him getting a big shootout with a certain kind of gun. And I want a, the manholes to blow up. And I, I got all these great images in my head. I was like, great, you know, concentrate on directing, maybe <laughs> with writing. <laughs> it, it's, it's, if you, I, I'm sorry, you do whatever, concentrate on whatever you want, but it's, it's it, the, the most successful storytelling is organic storytelling, the organic, Meaning you you let it's just repeating what Peter said. You let the character tell you where he or she wants to go, needs to go, and if you're really listening closely, the character the character will will resist, will refuse if you're trying to push her or him into a into a direction that is inorganic, and it's it really it it bears thinking about it, and it and it can be very frustrating as a writer. You say, I, I really want to get to this moment, but I don't know how you get there from here. Well, maybe you can't get there from here. Maybe the character would never do such a thing, and therefore, anyway, for just for a little for the for the writers listening. But uh, good point, Peter. It certainly isn't easy. I I wrote a script for a music video, and I sent it to Tom to to get Tom's opinion on it. And Tom's like Tom's brutally honest. And he's like, it's hard to read. It's hard to follow. It's hard to follow. Just try to put the ideas in your head on, uh, sketch them out. And, you know, with him with the index card. So maybe I can get him to help me with some index cards. It certainly is not an easy mm -hmm. gig by any means. Uh, our last audio question, and now I'm going to do a speed round of uh, Super Chats because we have a million of them. This is from Shawshank. And Shawshank has the following to say. Hi, Vincent Peter. This is Shashank from India. Just before I ask my question, I want to congratulate you guys on creating two of the greatest TV shows ever. Both Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul will grow across as some of the greatest works of fiction across any medium. My question is, after working on the Breaking Bad episode, do you guys think that Jimmy turning into Saul is him being a victim of his circumstances? Or has your perspective of him changed and you believe Chuck's prophecy of Jimmy actually came true? Very good, because you both have said, especially you, Peter, and both of you have said you're going to look at Breaking Bad differently and yeah. seeing what we've seen now. So that is a great question. Great question, Shashan. What do you What do you think, Peter? How would you What would you What would you say? I, but, well, first of all, I, I'm just it. It's so meaningful. It's some that you're watching in India. That's yes. just that just that just yes. that just rocks my world. That we can come up with these 
crazy things in a in a conference room in in Burbank or in Toluca Lake, and and uh, and then and then you're watching it in India, and, and it's what an amazing world we're in, where where you can be watching the same show all around the world. I mean, there's a lot of bad things happening in the world, knows, but uh, I don't know if this doesn't bring people together. I don't know what will. Uh, having having said that, now what was the question? Uh, you know, I think you know we're dramatists first. I mean, that's that's really our number one job, and it's tricky because it's it's hard to write about someone who's a pure victim of circumstances. Yeah. And I, I think that the people always have a choice about, or not always, but but the characters that we're writing about have a lot of agency. Uh, yeah. about how they're going to how they're going to um, react to the circumstances they're in yeah. but having said that it is there is fascinating that that ch what chuck said about jimmy was he right or did it become a self-fulfilling prophecy is is he is 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 chuck I, I don't think you could say chuck is responsible for what jimmy does because i think everyone's responsible for their own actions especially uh you know J nobody's nobody nobody's uh, kidnapped kidnapped uh uh his you know jimmy's jimmy's kid to make him do this or that uh the closest thing we've got to that is when kim kim is is uh is willing to shoot uh shoot uh, uh gus, gus uh yeah. because because uh jimmy's in danger so i i think i think you know we're all it's a tricky thing because in real life we're all shaped by circumstances god knows and by our biographies tell tell one story about us but it's how we react to those things that make us who we are. And you can, you can see that in your own life. People who, who are raised the same way act very differently. Uh, and uh, in, in drama, I, and the theory of my the drama that I work in anyway, is that people have choices and it's not just, you know, programmed biologically uh, or psychologically that there are real, real choices. And I think that's the reason why we watch drama is we're, we want kind of this, one of the things that you want to watch how different lives and game them out and in a really good drama you're you're leaning forward and kind of arguing with the character about what he or she should do next yeah. uh so that's i don't know those it uh, does that's that's a collection of random thoughts in response to your very sharp question that was a really good a really good answer and a good question and i want to add if i could add to it is that uh yeah i always believe these characters have agency but None of us exist in a vacuum, and and I would. It does seem to me uh, that you know he loves his brother, his older brother. He looks up to him. He loves him. Chuck's respect is is hard earned. Uh, I don't know that Jimmy ever really truly receives it. It's just a tragic story. This the 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 the, the these two don't they don't quite they just kind of miss. They don't quite connect like you want them to, like you hope for them, and. Chuck says time and again, you know, you're just, you're, you're, you cut too many corners. You're not fit to be a lawyer. You're not, you know, you, you've, 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 you're, you you do not know your place, you know, which is a terrible. I mean, I don't know that he literally ever verbatim said that, but he's basically saying that you don't know your place. You're not, you're not a lawyer. You're not deserving of this. You're not moral. And of course, Chuck's sense of morality <laughs> kind of blows in the wind a little bit too sometimes and it's and there's such envy on the part of chuck and and so yeah chuck chuck affects jimmy and and jimmy affects chuck and just like peter said they're all they're both big boys they don't they don't they are responsible for their own actions but they we all we all affect one another we human beings uh when we interact with people we have an effect sometimes small but sometimes small is all it takes you get the little little snowball rolling and it gets bigger and bigger going down the mountain and and yeah i i think uh jimmy would not have been jimmy and maybe he would not have been saul ultimately if not for chuck uh even though he is responsible for his own actions jimmy is and 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 without kim i don't think jim i don't know that there would have been a saul goodman without you know, without 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 Kim, and and it's just there's a lot of tragedy in this. As funny a show as this is, and as we strive to make it, it's there's a lot of tragedy in this show, which I makes me sad as a viewer, but I, I makes me engages me, and hopefully everybody else.
Agreed. Agreed. And everyone is responsible for their own actions. It's not like you cast like Liam Neeson uh, or something. There would be some kidnappings and some hunting down, <laughs> you know, you know, find you and kill you. We're going to jump over now in a speed round of Super Chat. So I've got a couple written down and then Karina, our producer, is sending me a whole bunch in text as well, too. So these were written down earlier. First one is from Courtney's Review. She has a fantastic YouTube channel. Uh, she is saying, uh, thank you for giving us the two best t- uh, shows ever made. The two best shows ever made. Walt has the pork pie. Kim has the Zafiro and Neho stuff. Stopper. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Jimmy has the ring. We always see him reach for that when he's about to do something bad and just kind of fidget. What is your talisman or magic object? We'll go with you, Vince, first. Do you have a little special magic object or something that is your, it may be a crutch maybe or whatever? Well, I shouldn't talk about the silver lame diaper, but... Um... <laughs> You mean like in real life, a talisman? Oh, it could uh, it could be fictitious, but maybe a good luck charm or something. Hmm. Yeah, you no know, contract renewal, Sony or something like that's always good too. But you know, you know what? I always carry this. This is like a shout out. This should be the official uh, flashlight of uh, of of uh, inside the Gilliverse. This thing, I always got this. Thing. <laughs> this thing, I love this. Love it. Uh, talisman? Uh, no, I don't really. That's a good question. I like the question. I'm sorry I don't have a good answer for That's that. That's okay. You can think about it. We'll go to Peter. How about you? It's not the beard anymore. It's not the beard. Well, I, I don't know that it ever was. I, I, I will say I'm sometimes I'm more comfortable carrying a camera. Uh, I like having it's, it's I don't always do it. But when when I've got a camera with me, somehow it's, it's I'm a little bit I feel I, I, I like I like having that. But I don't know if that's uh I don't think I have. I don't think I have a talisman. Isn't that sad? I think I have to. Get, I need. I'm going to get a pinky ring with a little piece of red thread on it. Uh, okay. I, a talisman. I like that question. I'm going to. I'm going to yeah. go out in search of a talisman. I, they're fun to write about, aren't they? And by the way, the first talisman, yeah, the pork pie hat. Uh, that was a complete fluke. We didn't mean for that to turn into this idiomatic. Uh, this, this, this. You know, did, did we, Peter? I mean, that was like. No, it, it, it was just like it just turned out to be this thing. We didn't even intend for it on Breaking Bad, right? We had, we had Brian, and when Brian shaved his head, uh, I don't know, I don't. It, not everyone in his family was excited about having Brian shave his head. Oh. Uh, Brian was all for it, and uh, it, Vince it didn't. It, am I right in remembering that you shaved your head in sympathy I, with I Brian? So like- you had a shaved head. I had a shaved head partly so that Brian's wife, Robin, would be less mad at me. And then when the season ended, Brian went like this. I swear to God, this is how I remember in my mind's eye. He went, and his hair went, and popped back out. I do that with a mustache. (laughs) And meanwhile, I look like the uh, character from the comic strip, Henry, for like uh, the next six months, you know, and I thought my hair's never growing back. And uh, it's just, yeah, that was, uh, don't, don't ever shave your head in, in, uh, you know, in support of somebody else, no matter what, just don't do it. It's a bad idea. I did see some shots of you with very short hair. Like, I mean, really short. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Very. We're going to jump. When you got a weird shaped head, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah. Sometimes hair is a good thing. Yep. Yep. I I look like a light bulb or something. (laughs) Another one from VPK says, Peter and Vince, what were your react? Oh, this is good. What were your reactions when you discovered that Ray Seahorn got her first two Emmy nominations? That was awesome. How great was that, Peter? Joy. I mean, it's just uh, joy and thrill. I, I, I mean, you know, you know, you've had her on the show. She's just one of the great people I've ever met. She's talented. She's and she's got such humility and, you know, everybody on the show just roots for her so much. Um, and it's such, that was one of the reasons I was so confident that she'd do it. In addition to the fact that she's a brilliant person, I was very confident she would do well directing because everybody, everybody on the show would walk through fire for her. Uh, she's just one of those, she's one of those people. And I, I mean, she deserves all the recognition you could possibly get. I, I you know, so I, I think we were all thrilled. I mean, there's when I talked to Bob that morning, I was congratulating him on get his nomination. All he could talk about was Ray. Yeah. So That's we, so we cool. were all, we were all thrilled and it was, it was, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really exciting. And 
she's she's I think we're just at the beginning of an amazing career for her. Yeah. No, she's she's just the cutest thing ever and the most talented actor ever. And she is just the sweetest person. And uh yeah, that was just like it was it was great. It was a great that was a great morning. The whole Gilverse was happy. And by the way, both Bob and Ray will be here next Friday night, same time as well, too. Um, there is a next super chat. Uh, Jonathan Tessier says, wondering if there will ever be a Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul video game, something similar, similar to Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> we talk about licensing at the top of the show. That'd be pretty cool to get in some video games. Has that ever been toyed around with that, uh, at uh, Gilver's headquarters? Good, good, good thinking. Uh, we did, you know, early on, and I'm not much of a video game player, but I, I, how can you not know of Grand Theft Auto? And I remember saying, to the guys uh, who who said, uh, you know, that, that they have off run an Apple now, that two gentlemen who said yes, originally Breaking Bad, I said, you know, who owns Grand Theft Auto? Can't you have like a module? Can there be like a, a Breaking Bad? Still makes sense to me. Uh, that never came to fruition. Uh, there have been quite a few attempts at video games. Uh, some of them kind of sort of made it to market. Uh, we tried to do a VR uh, experience with the Sony PlayStation VR headset. Uh, we tried to do, we did a mobile game. It lasted for a little while. Uh, Jen Carroll, the in, in, inestimable, uh, what's it like a great thing to call Jen? Like, she's like, she's amazing. Best. She's amazing. She's amazing. Inestimable. In, in, I can't even say that word. Anyway, Jen is amazing. She had uh, a tornado she, in human form. Tornado, yeah. Like the, the like the Tasmanian yeah. devil. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she's wonderful. And she put a lot of energy and a lot of effort and a lot of talent into writing three or four different uh, 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 stories for three or four different video games, including the VR thing. There was a lot of people hours poured into that. Uh, and it just, you know, it's making a video game is damn hard. The What little I learned about it through this process, it literally takes years, years and millions of dollars, especially when you're trying to break new ground with VR and whatnot. Never quite came to fruition. It's a shame. And sometimes but even with the title, like with the, the name behind it, it can still not be good if it, the content's not good, right? It's not just, you can't just bank on the name. It's all so true. It's all about the execution. What's that famous story? I do remember playing the Atari. Oh back yeah, in the early eighties. What was the famous uh, ET? The ET game. ET. The yeah, ET. they the literally I think they ex yeah they right? excavated them. They were yeah. they were bulldozing them in the desert somewhere <laughs> I think in Nevada, and but they've they've somewhere. excavated some of the ET games. Yeah, look the, at I mean, but, but Vince, wasn't there a um, isn't there a slot machine in Las Vegas? A Breaking Bad slot machine? There was. I was in Las Vegas recently. Uh, um, I'm proud to say I wandered around a uh, uh, wandered around a, uh, a, a, a casino in North Las Vegas for a day and a half. Did not put a single quarter. I, probably there's no machine that takes a quarter anymore. Probably everything's five bucks. Did not put any money into any of them. But I was looking all around. I was there for. Uh, it's a long story. It had nothing to do with anything. But. I looked all around. I, you know, I don't know. They, there was a Breaking Bad slot machine. I don't know. It must not have been a big hit because I, I didn't see it at this casino. I don't, I don't know if they, uh, you know, you just never know. It's same with the video games. You don't know what, what's going to click with people. It's, mm -hmm. boy, if you're going to make a video game, and we are, you know, all joking aside, we, uh, the, 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 the way fans like the folks watching this love these shows is very, is very, very proud makes us very proud uh it, kind of humbling too because it does not feel always we don't feel like i don't i'm not gonna speak for me i don't feel feel like we i deserve it but i it makes me be very cognizant of 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 keeping the brand to as high a level as we can keep it so if you're going to do a video game you can't just do the et atari video game version you got to got to make it great and the devil is in the details and execution is everything and it just we just don't have enough bandwidth usually to to to, to make it work. So I I wouldn't hold your breath on a video game. No, 
I love the way you said that, though, because you've been quoted. I've heard many people say that about you. Devil in the, is in the details. A lot of my guests have said that working with you, Vince. So that's very cool and very true. You just just because the name could be the biggest thing in the world does not mean it's going to sell. It has to be a story, just like the story that you've delivered. But that, thank you for sharing that. Here is a super chat comment. I'm going to say this one really fast and go into a super chat question. But this is from Andrew Sarchus, uh, probably saying it wrong. Says would love to see a mini episode of a flashback to a Salamanca family reunion with Lalo, Tuco, Hector, and the twins. Very, very cool. Who knows down the road? Uh, and a question from Pete Peppers. I got a, a big thank you to Pete. Pete's had me on his channel a couple times. He has a wonderful, wonderful, massive YouTube channel. And he says, not knowing where Jimmy and Kim's relationship was going, how do you approach crafting their early scenes? It's so impressive how you build on little things and make them feel so natural and familiar. Good question. Peter, take it. Because that's a, I mean, because, but to start with, we didn't know where it was going, right? Safe to say? No, no we didn't. We, you know, I think the, the big one of the, maybe the biggest surprise of the show is that it turns out to be a uh, tragic, well, a, a romance. Yeah. I don't know if it's tragic, but it's, it's a romance. It's a, and, and which I, I don't think either one of us expected when we started to do uh, the show about the funny lawyer. Uh, but but the relationship between Jimmy and Kim it turns out to really be, you know, at the heart of 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 uh, of, of show. And uh, yeah, that that's something that that's something that evolved. I think we all you know, there are little bits and pieces uh, of everybody who worked on the show in that relationship. You know, there's certainly there's a lot of Bob and Ray in, in there. But there's also, you know, all of us in the writer's room contributed uh Feelings, you know, it's, it's one thing because, you know, the, the truth is that probably none of us or very few of us have had done a, a drug deal. Uh, but most of us, most of us have, have fallen in love. And, and if you if you've fallen in love in life, you've probably been hurt. Uh, and you probably, you know, you probably have a lot of thoughts about intimacy. And so we got we got to play with that a lot. And, and, and to think about that and to think about what what the chemistry could be between these two characters. And I, that's one of the things I'm most proud of is just, I think this is very, in some ways it's a very adult, adult relationship, but it's also two people who have limited themselves uh, in certain ways and, and two people. And so I, I, I couldn't be prouder of that, but we did not know. I mean, and, and, and so we, we, we followed it very much step by step, but then of course, you know, by the time we got to season five, the end of season five, when Kim is the one kind of pushing things along uh, and she, you can tell that she's made the realization that this relationship is always renewed when they scam. Uh, you know, she's, she, it, it's kind of been that undercurrent for a while, but at that point, you know, she's, she's hitting that, she's hitting that button uh, to rescue the situation and, and to get, we started seeing that this was going to take a, a really dark turn <laughs> at that point. Great answer. Can I add real quick to it? We could be the greatest writers in the world, which we are not. We're, we're pretty proud of ourselves. We're pretty good. And we work with some of the greatest writers, but it doesn't matter how good a writer you are. It, you, we have to give credit where credit is due with Ray Seahorn. Again, talking about Ray, mm -hmm. we hired an actress uh, that we thought we liked her a lot. But we didn't really know her when we hired her. It's just like when you first, you know, you, you hire someone for a job, you don't really know them yet. We didn't really know her. We did not know, you know, you always have high hopes, but you had no idea how great was she, she was going to be. No idea. You hope for the best. And then you just, you go where you, the, the, you know, the, the fates take you where they take you. If she hadn't been so wonderful, so watchable, so charismatic, the world wouldn't love her like it does. You wouldn't, wouldn't, Eric, you wouldn't be asking questions like, uh, you know, how happy were you guys when you heard Ray Seahorn got an Emmy nomination? Everybody's rooting for her. We didn't know that when we hired her. We thought, well, you know, it'll be, uh, I guess she's going to be the love interest. Maybe she will be. We'll see what kind of chemistry they have. If it's not that great, we'll, I don't know, we'll make a change, you know, and God, were we lucky hiring her. And it would have never gone, no matter how good the writing was, it would have never gone to the heights that it went to, if not for, for the, the actor, I think she prefers actor, uh, versus actors. Yeah. If not for the actor we hired, 
So yeah. that's fantastic. I'm going to say send a call out to our viewers right now. Some of our astute viewers, if you want to clip this little segment, do that. That'd be really nice, and we'll we'll show Ray next week. That'll be really nice. She's she's incredible. It's absolutely amazing. It's so nice to see Bob too when Bob's getting the accolades of an Emmy nomination. But look at Ray. He passes it off to Ray. It's just, just amazing, you know. And she she's a, a leader for sure. Uh, we're going to wrap up with a couple more super chats. We'll let you guys go here. There's one from uh, Schnell Saxena. Uh, when you introduce characters, how do you decide on which seeds to plant for interesting character growth? Example, you can trace the season six Howard scheme to Kim smiling at billboard stunt in season one. Very, very good. Good, good question. Um, uh, hmm. What is you know, I think it's, 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 I'm sorry. Maybe if you hear that, the, the garage next door keeps opening the door. Uh, <laughs> it's opening, closing the door. And it's, all good. All good. Back. All good. <laughs> and the lights dim. <laughs> more amperage in my office. Yep. Uh, Peter, uh, what do you think? So that was a good question. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I think, you know, it's, we take it. I mean, it's, it's, kind of the same answer sort of kind of sort of we take it step by step and i think you're, you're right to pick out that moment where she smiles uh, at the billboard stunt but part of our you know part of our thinking at that point is as much as i could recreate it is just we're going to cut to howard and obviously he's going to be irritated uh if kim is irritated too that's not that interesting yeah. so you know what if she smile? what if she smiles a little bit and in fact, I remember that particular episode. We we actually, I think the director shot uh, Ray having a couple of different smiles, different levels right. of smile. Yeah. And I, I believe we picked like, the most subtle one. Uh, and that was when you started, you know, it's interesting because those silent moments, it's, it's a fascinating thing because those silent moments, you learned so much about the actor. You learned so much about the character. And one of the things that we learned was that Ray very much like Brian Cranston actually uh, plays can play silence like uh, as if she's as if she's got an entire speech and you can't take your eyes off her and then just like Vince said I mean uh, he said it beautifully the joy of this is that we get to watch the actors and kind of see what they do with the material and then write to that uh, so that, you know it's because I, I mean Michael McKeon I don't think when I, I remember when we wrote the first episode with uh, Chuck, I think our idea was mostly that that uh, Chuck was uh, a burden to Jimmy. Uh, that was that was what we were trying to do. We wanted to Jimmy to have a little bit of a burden to humanize him, to yeah. to get to get under his skin, somebody who he cared about. Because if you don't care about anybody, you can't be hurt. Um, you know, so it it really felt right that he was in his own way defending his brother. And then Michael came in and he played, I've said this before, but he played it with such pride that suddenly it's like, wait a minute, what's, there's more to this relationship. He is not just a burden. And just like with Ray, she could take, and I think in, in, in the pilot that Vince directed and that we wrote together, she has, I think like three lines. Yeah. And you know, it's, and I think that was, um, you just saw everything. And part of that, of course, was Vince's wonderful directing. And a lot of it was just Ray. And it takes a lot of confidence for an actor. That takes, that's one of the things we don't talk about. It's not just artistry, it's confidence. She has, she had the confidence to know, and she puts a lot of thought into everything that she does, but she had the confidence to know that she was making the points that needed to be made without having to say a lot of words yeah. and that's i think that's anyway that's those are just yeah. adding adding to what vince just said no excellent excellent answer and and to just to because to, i can't help myself it, it again to, to 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 drive home the point we get a lot of credit thank thank you guys for giving us all this credit for having all this stuff planned out from the from the jump right from the beginning and we don't we don't it's just a, that's just the honest answer uh, again, for the for the for the for the folks who who want to who want to do this for a living, who are watching, you you don't have to have all the answers at the beginning. That's the beauty of this job. That's why I love TV so much. In a in a movie, yeah, you gotta you gotta you got a script. You got a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's an hour and a half long. Hopefully, more and more they're two hours plus. But uh, you know, including some stuff I've done. But uh, you know, but and and it's a it's a finished thing. But with a TV show, it's an organic living thing that just goes on and on. You hope, you hope, you hope you don't get canceled, 
And when you have that opportunity, it grows and it thrives. And you hear people, sometimes I hear showrunners saying, oh, I knew the ending before I ever, before we ever even shot the pilot. You know, more power to you, but you are robbing yourself of riches, it seems to me. You know, not to tell anyone else how to do it. There's no one way to do it. But, you know, you, you get to, you, you rob yourself of all these delights, potentially, of, of, of finding out this voyage of discovery along with the fans. Where is this thing going to go? Where is this character going to wind up? Is Kim Wexler going to be important to this story? Maybe, maybe not. Depends kind of on the actor. Depends on a lot of things. You know, it depends on, it's just, if you roll with it, it it's becomes uh, always scary, but also kind of delightful. Uh, well it's, said, very it, well said. I'm just, I'm just going to jump in, Eric, with one more, a little, one more inside baseball thing is generally we don't have the whole season written before we start shooting. So that helps us. That's actually helpful. And it's, it creates a lot of pressure. Because once you start shooting, it's very hard to to have the time in the writers' room. But uh, the la the only season that we actually had completely broken before we shot, I believe, was this this past one. And boy, I I would have hated I'd hate to think where we'd be right now if we had had to break the entire first season before we shot a frame. Uh, yeah. I think it would be a, it would end up being a very different show. But that's the position that a lot of shows are in now True. because of the way the way the way things are produced. Uh, you know, they, they basically have to fi figure everything out and then shoot. Uh, and the nice thing about what, the way we've been doing it is it's a little bit extra pressure, uh, but it means it means that we get to to see what's going on and write to it a little bit. Nice. It's almost like a musician uh, writing a song uh, like a, for the first time at a live performance and feeling the the feedback from the crowd. OK, yes. that will work. Let's not go to that chord change. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah. 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 Our last three questions for the night, because I really respect your, your gentleman's time here and I don't want to keep you much longer. Uh, so this is uh, a comment or question from uh, Teresa Martinez in, in Albuquerque. She's met you several times. Uh, the one thing I'd love to know if there's will be a box at a Better Call Saul and what will it be? Perhaps a briefcase JMM. And I know sometimes you might not know all the licensing and merchandising things, but has there been any talk of a, a special box set? Yeah. Good question. Uh, and I'm, and thank you for being interested still in buying Blu-rays uh, and DVDs. I, I, it would be a shame if that technology went away. I know it's great to have instant access to streaming and all that, but I, I, I personally like owning the medium, the media. Touchy whatever. feely, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 Peter, we have talked about that, haven't we? And we've even talked about. I don't know if we'll ever figure this out legally, but putting one giant you know, unified field theory of, uh, yes. you know, one giant box set that has the movie and has both TV shows. I don't wow. know if we'll ever do that, but I, I, I'm not promising that because there's you. a lot of legal and, and, and union hoops to jump through. But there's got to be a, I would think, a bo an ultimate box set for Better Call Saul, right, Peter? I would hope so. Yeah, it's uh, at this point on Breaking Bad, I remember we, we, we had already spent a lot of time looking at the barrel. Uh, and so I, I don't know with you, we haven't seen a barrel yet. I, I always thought that doing, a uh, it doesn't, it leaves El Camino out though, but, it, but I, I always thought of doing it a, a double-sided until before El Camino, I thought we'd do a double side. One side is the esteem with the red door and then you turn yeah. it around and the other side is, is the RV or Walt's, uh, Walt's Aztec. Oh. Uh, so, <laughs> so, uh, but, but, uh, it's, I, I don't know, but we'll have to see, we'll have to see. I, I, I really, and I agree with Vince. Um, we work so hard on the picture and the sound on this show and, um, and streaming is great, but, um, there's all kinds of all uh, streaming is great. And, and uh, we're happy for people to watch it any way they can. Yeah. But, uh, every once in a while we find out that things aren't looking or sounding quite the way we'd hoped. And, uh, that's one of the reasons why it, we just love the fact that there's uh, Blu-ray because Blu-ray really is. Yeah. Uh, you're going to catch so much more on the picture and the sound that we spent many, 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 a, many a long month and week and year uh, on, uh, on on every every shot and every moment of sound. And, and the people we work with, the boy, the, the directors of photography and the colorists and the people in post and our sound mixers and the sound recordists, they do just amazing work. And, and I think maybe the at the moment, the best way to appreciate that is if you, if you have that if you have that uh, physical physical media. Oh, so true. I want to. We want to make Diane Mercer happy. 
Yes. Uh, that's right. That's right. And, and uh, who is so more than any yes. single other person is, is responsible for this show looking and sounding so good uh, because she is uh, the ultimate authority of, of that. And yeah, so true. I, Hey, maybe you could do, yeah, you could do the Aztec on one side and the, and the, and the esteem on the other. And then from the top down, it would be the El Camino. Oh, there you go. There, that'd be fan freaking fantastic. Put, and you could put Walt, Walt at the, at the steering wheel and Jimmy at the steering yeah. wheel and looking down on, uh, you know, okay. through the windshield of the El Camino. Yeah. I, wonder and, uh, if I like it. That's fantastic. I just had Karina, our production manager at uh, Texas, say we just broke 700 viewers or 600 viewers right now. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. Nice. That's great. Nice. I love that idea though. And, and you know what? Thanks. We, we talked about the, the, the magical Jen, the Tasmanian devil, whatever we, we described her as she sent me a copy. She had uh, the team send me a couple copies of the El Camino vinyl and every, every single show before I go live with you guys and girls, I listen to that. I get in the mood. So I love the physical medium as well, too. And I love that. I love that soundtrack. It's great. So our last two questions are for the evening. And I'm going to let you guys get off to your weekend. From Paul Sura, he's that sexy voice at the top. You're listening to blah, blah, blah. Uh, That's him. He says, was it deliberate to correlate the fact that Jimmy's phone call on 11-12-2010 and Walt's cancer diagnosis were both on or around their 50th birthdays and were kind of launching points of them taking their final stance? God bless you guys. I, I am the last person to ask about the uh, timeline. The timeline, who was who was responsible for this brilliant timeline, Peter? It was it was it was was it it was. Uh, There's a lot of young ladies in the office were were responsible. Is is uh, was it Ariel to start? For a with? long time, it was Ariel Levine. Yeah. Uh, for but they, there's yeah, she, there were a lot of contributions from that yeah. that great office, yeah. full of talented people. Who are all uh, scattered to the four winds this season because of COVID? Um, I will say, sometimes, yeah, I I, can, I can't speak for Walt, but I can tell you that uh, my wife's birthday is is uh, is uh, November twelfth, and so that 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 became uh, that became uh, Jimmy's birthday, and also the day the day that. Uh, and he doesn't remark on it, but it clearly it must be his birthday when he's get when he makes that call when Francesca calls him in uh, episode 11. Right. So yes. And that was fantastic. What an, ep- I've watched that episode five times in the, in the past few days. Oh, fantastic. It's, it's, yeah. It's Way to go, great. Tom. Oh, well, thank don't, you for don't, watching. Don't, thank don't you for watching. Do don't, 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 don't swell his head. He just, uh, uh, oh, I know. <laughs> I know. I, I often joke with him. I said, so Tom, are you, what are you doing after this? You're going to be a Walmart greeter or what's, what's going on? You know, yeah. <laughs> I love that guy so much. He's so great, as, as you all do, too. Our very last Super Chat question for the evening. And I apologize from the bottom of my heart to everyone. There's been some great questions. We just, there's just not enough hours in the show. And we, uh, we didn't expect to, um, to have as many as we did tonight. It's phenomenal. From Tyler Moyle, Moyle says, How different would Better Call Saul be if it was made before Breaking Bad? For Better Call Saul, were there any ideas that you liked but couldn't do due to timeline continuity issues? Oh man, good, excellent question. Yeah. And this begs another question. Uh, I want to hear Peter's answer, but it begs another question for folks who have not seen. You know, you you want your work to live. Um, you know, selfishly, egotistically, whatever. You want your work to live, outlive you. And for folks who have not seen either show yet, now the question, the 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 ancillary question is, which one do you start with, if you're watching? I don't know, Peter, what do you think as far as uh, what what would you, I mean, I mean, everything would have been different. And there's so many everything. things we're boxed into characters yes. we would have killed off that we couldn't characters that we would have not killed off that we, yeah, I mean, because you're completely boxed in. Uh, once you have Breaking Bad, you're completely boxed in with Better Call Saul. It was so much harder to write than we thought it would be. Is that safe to say? And we wouldn't have come up with, I'm thinking about it, you know, I, I don't know how we would have come up with Omaha. You know, I don't think you could have started with a guy uh, as a fugitive. I, you know, it's an interesting thing because I think that you Breaking Bad could exist, certainly could exist without Better Call Saul, but I don't know that Better Call Saul would have ever, ever existed without Breaking Bad, partially because of the Breaking Bad kind of brought us the freedom to uh, to do a really different kind of show. If you think about how we would go in and pitch Better Call Saul, what, it's about this guy who's later going to become a shady lawyer. <laughs> He's yeah. not that shady to start with. Uh, so, you know, it's a um, 
it's it's an interesting it's an interesting conundrum. Uh, I, I it's it's hard for me to picture what the show would have been like. Um, yeah, if we if we had tried to do it before break, I think things would have had, especially in the first season, there would have oh, things would have had to be very different. I think I think the uh, we would have had to maybe maybe I don't know. What do you think, Vince? Yeah, this is a great. This is a great question. It's a great thought experiment. I mean, you know, as different as 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 the two shows are, apples and oranges, and I couldn't be more proud of both of them. And I love, by the way, I love when people say they love Better Call Saul more than Breaking Bad. It's I didn't think I'd ever say that. I didn't think I thought, you know, I, I didn't think, but I love it. And they are so different. And yet, at the at the heart of them both, they are they are both two shows about the devolution of a character. A character mm-hmm. who starts off basically good and devolves into, it's sort of like, uh, you know, it's uh, both of them are a Christmas carol about, you know, the Eb- Ebenezer Scrooge starts off as a, as a promising young man and turns into kind of a creep. And, uh, you know, it remains to be seen what happens, but we know what happens in, in Breaking Bad. It remains to be seen what happens to this particular Ebenezer Scrooge. But, but you know, so far this devolution of these two characters, and and I, you could have absolutely done a show about a a basically honest, uh, scrappy uh, underdog lawyer who who gets uh, great success and simultaneously loses his soul. But I mean, it I hope I think it stands a reason it would be so very different if Walter White didn't exist and we created him somewhere in season five four or five uh yeah it really uh it's kind of a fast that show can that show can exist all it needs all needs to happen is we just re-edit the whole thing right right. (laughs) (laughs) yeah get a hold of the team okay guys we have a little bit of work here for you Uh, you don't you're not having any plans this weekend right and get to it get to it (laughs) Well, gentlemen, I'm going to let you guys uh, uh, get to your weekend here. I want to thank you so very, very much. It's been an absolute pleasure to have both of you back. And at the same time, this is a very rare and special treat for all of the Gilliver's family across the world. And as we saw tonight, we had questions coming in from all over the planet. I can't thank you enough. And two more episodes to go. We got Monday and the following Monday. And uh, it's I'm, I'm afraid. I'm a little afraid, honestly. And sometimes people think I get to see the, uh, the the screeners and stuff like that, and I don't. Um, and so I have no idea. And I'm I, and I asked this question to a few of our guests. Maybe do you guys when you watch? Well, probably not because you know what's going to happen. But some some of the actors we ask this, I pause sometimes to see how much is left in, a, in an episode. I'm like, oh no, there's like seven minutes left. And no, and so I try not to do that. I consciously try not to pause the show because I don't want to plan what's going to happen or it's going to be a cliffhanger. Do you ever do that in any TV shows that you watch? Do you pause to see what's left? Yeah, I mean, I mean, well, I mean, I, I know the feeling. If not that literally, I, I know I'm reading a book I love. I, I I slow down when I'm reading a book that I love, and I, you know, and I, I hold it up. Oh, I'm more than halfway through. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I, I watch, I, I don't time shift that much. So I, I, all I have to do is look at the clock. Usually when I'm watching, I, I, I should, uh, I should time shift more and not, and not sit through so many commercials, but I, yeah, I just, you know, no, there's only one act left. There's only, yeah, I've definitely yeah. had that, that feeling. You, it's a, it's a lovely thing to think about people doing that with stuff that we've, we've, we've labored on. Cause I've had that all my life, you know, and even with movies I've seen before, Fame, favorite movies okay the, you know the big scene in the godfather with the the you know sunny getting getting machine gunned at the causeway that's oh i'm looking forward to that okay that's over okay now you know gee i'm, I'm you know even though i've seen it 36 times i'm i'm you know i'm i'm, I'm, I'm it's gonna be i'm gonna be sad when it ends yeah i think peter you you have that you've i know you've had that experience oh yeah yeah uh it's it's savoring you're savoring i mean it's a little the clock is a little deceptive now because uh the our episodes like a lot of tv shows the episodes vary in length now yeah. so it's a little it's a little tricky to it's a little tricky to know uh but it's certainly i i'm yeah you, you want to know oh i don't know it's it's an interesting thing i i remember i'm old enough to remember uh the empire strikes back i always go back to that i, I remember seeing that in the theater and not really know anything, knowing anything about it, uh, just knowing it was the Star Wars sequel. And then I just felt like I walked off the edge of a cliff <laughs> at the end of it because there's, 
I mean, it was a literal cliffhanger because there was there was uh, Han Solo and Cogermite, and <laughs> you know, wait a minute, that can't be the end of the movie. No, what? <laughs> and then you know, and then it was what was it four or five four years? Yeah, it's not like waiting for a one? season. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Uh, but I have to, you know, and it was uh, so uh, you know, you do you do you do have those uh, those feelings about the rhythm. I, I think that part of the thing that makes TV fun now is that the rhythms of the TV shows are different. You know, you can, you, yeah. you, you know, the events don't necessarily come in, in predictable sequences. It's one of the reasons I think it's, it's must be really tough on people who uh, have to make a TV show for uh, some of the broadcast networks where they have like five or six interruptions an hour. We're very fortunate. We were on AMC. And so we had a, a four, what we call a four act uh, a structure. And, and so we didn't have as many, we don't have as many commercial breaks, but I think it, it's, it's, uh, it's tricky. It's, but you know, you're talking about story rhythm and it's fast. This stuff is deep. This stuff is deep. I, I want to read a book about this. I want to hear somebody really smart talk about this. There you, you know, go. You just reminded me of when I was a little kid, the greatest thing ever was to get to go to Disney world. And my brother, Pat and I, we'd go to my mom or my dad would take us to, to Disney world. And, uh, I remember standing in line at like the Haunted Mansion or the Pirates of the Caribbean or Space Mountain. And the lines were super long because they didn't have whatever, you know, the, whatever they have now where you can speed through them if you if you grease the wheels a little. And I remember standing, looking forward in the line, thinking all these people are ahead of us. They get to go on this thing before before we do. And then I look behind us. All these people are behind us. They have to wait longer, but they'll still be on the ride when we're out and after the ride is over for us, they'll still be enjoying it. It was this weird, like it, like it would, I would, I, I don't know. That was such a weird little kid, I guess. It's a good way to experience that's, it for sure. Yeah. Everyone's going to take the, the story, ride. That's a story of the human race. You know, yeah, all the people yeah. who come before us and the people yeah. who are, who are yet to come. Wow. Well, it's all a ride at Disneyland. Yes. But that, in that perspective, it. look at, look what's been brought before, uh, before you guys in television and, and, and uh, the big screen. And there's going to be many beautiful things after, but look what you guys have brought to us, to the world. So thank you. Thank you. Wow. That, thank, Eric, thank you. And thank everybody who's, who's watching and, and, tuning in uh thank you guys for for uh if it hadn't been for for you guys uh we would have been canceled back in the first season of of, of breaking bad there would have never been a better call Saul or an el camino and and uh we just uh, peter safe to say i think we both feel very because peter was there right from the get-go and I, as you as everybody knows watching this and and we would not have uh we would not have uh we wouldn't be here today so and we wouldn't have so thank you guys Thank you to everyone. Gentlemen, thank you so very much. And before we go, I just want to say thank you to some other people that make this happen as well, too. Uh, you know them. I want to say uh, thank you to Warren and Rachel at bobbleheads.com. You know Warren very well. Um, a big thank you as well to our executive producer, Karina, as well as her incredible moderator team, Eamon, Jen Renata. Big thanks to everyone at Gilliver's headquarters, Jen, Mel, and Joanna, the, the best people on the planet, all of our subscribers. A lot of new faces here tonight, so if you're here for the first time, please consider hitting that subscribe button down below. We promise to work just as hard to keep you as a subscriber as we did to, yeah right down there right where peter's pointing right down below and a couple of fun upcoming guests just to let you know as well too we have a we're really trying to push this uh, finale of better call saul so next friday night same time we have the lovely ray seahorn and bob odenkirk himself uh, Saul Goodman and Kim Wex are on the show. Friday, August 19th, we have the film students, the trio all together. We're going to have them uh, in the house, the band's back together. And Friday, August 26th, I was going to ask you a question about recasting, but we'll talk about that another time. And it's for the first time in Gilver's history of recast, and it went very, very well. Uh, Pat Healy will be here. And we are renewed for a fourth season here on the Gilver, so we'll be talking about all this great stuff well into January of 2023. Gentlemen, thank you so very much. I'm going to say goodbye to you off the air, but man, I'm, I'm pumped for the week. Weekend. Thanks to you guys. Wow. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Everybody. A pleasure. Everyone, be safe. Have a fantastic weekend. Be sure to get back here nice and early next Friday for Bob and Ray, the Bob and Ray show. And we will see you next time as soon as I find the button to get out of here. And uh, here it is right here. We'll see you next time right here on Inside the Gilliverse. Until then, cheers. Thank you.
Thanks again for tuning in to Inside the Gilliverse with Eric Broadbent. Be sure to check back each week for more great discussions and interviews with cast and crew from Breaking Bad, El Camino, and Better Call Saul. Please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends.